There's a lot of talk about unmasking right now in regards to President Trump's former national security advisor, Michael Flynn. You'll recall that intelligence reports revealed that Russia's ambassador to the United States had concerning interactions with an unnamed American during the 2016 election. And through a process known as unmasking, that unnamed person was revealed to be General Flynn. On Wednesday, another set of names were revealed. This time, it was the names of the Obama administration officials who requested Flynn's unmasking. Those names were disclosed Wednesday upon the request of two Republican senators and former Vice President Joe Biden, who is now President Trump's 2020 presidential rival, was one of a few dozens of those names on the list. For more on this now, I want to bring in CBS News campaign reporters Nicole Skanga and Bo Erickson. Nicole has been following the Trump campaign and Bo has been following the Biden campaign. Thanks guys for joining us. Nicole, I'm going to start with you. The unmasking of Michael Flynn is being linked to President Trump's so-called Obamagate allegations. What is Obamagate and what does this unmasking have to do with it? Well, Lana, we've heard this word Obamagate a lot from the president as of recent. He has tweeted it out a grand total of 13 times over the past five days. Now, part of President Trump and his allies' uh, conspiracy theory here is accusing a former president, Barack Obama, of spying on the Trump administration. And you might have heard the word deep state thrown out as well. For several years now, the president has claimed that Democratic officials within the Department of Justice and FBI abused their powers to investigate members of his campaign and sabotage his presidency. Now, we should point out that unmaskings within the intelligence community are fairly uh, common. There were over 10,000 unmaskings alone back in 2019. The president has not been able to point out specific evidence as to what Obamagate is, but this is what he told a reporter who asked on Monday, quote, you know what the crime is. The crime is very obvious to everybody. What we do know, if we take a step back here, is that uh, the Trump campaign has tried to shift the focus away from uh, the election serving as some sort of referendum on the president's coronavirus response and really highlighting contrast between between uh, the president and former Vice President Joe Biden. And so, again, we are seeing a lot of messaging around the former vice president um, and certainly a lot of allegations uh, from President Trump about uh, what he calls Obamagate. Yeah, we, we remember that reporter asking him specifically to identify it, and it was just... Um, it was not easily identified by the president. So, Bo, during an interview on Tuesday, Biden said that he, quote, knew nothing about the moves to investigate Michael Flynn. But this was before the list revealed that he was, in fact, involved in the unmasking. So how has Biden responded to his name being on that list? Well, Joe Biden has not uh, responded directly, per se, but there are three questions that he could answer to maybe clarify what he knew. The first of being, what did he know, as he said he didn't know much on that Good Morning America interview, as you said. The second question that he, that he needs to answer is, why did he make this request on January 12th? 2012. And the third question is, did he see the intelligence that came from this request? The letter that was released in the list with his names said specifically that they cannot guarantee that the requester actually saw the intelligence that they asked to unmask. And so, um, as Nicole said, this process is pretty standard, actually, when it comes to the intelligence community and intelligence that the United States gathers. Uh, and even though that Joe Biden is not has not uh, responded directly, his campaign has, and they are forceful to say that this is a partisan issue that is trying to distract the country from the Trump administration's response to the coronavirus uh, pandemic that we're engaged in right now. Well, all of that might be true, Bo, but he still. It seemed like misled uh, Good Morning America when he said that he knew nothing about it when, in fact. His name was on the list, so clearly he knew something, right? 
Uh, it, it seems like he did request on January 12th, to, uh, 2017. Uh, but also in that interview, he said, oh, I thought you meant the prosecution of Michael Flynn. So he left it very broad in the interview on Tuesday. Uh, later tonight, he is going to uh, turn up on uh, one of the cable news programs. And I'm hoping as reporter that's followed Joe Biden for a while that this question is asked about him. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. So, Nicole, what are the implications for President Trump's reelection campaign? How is his base responding to all of this? Well, certainly his base is responding by repeating some of these claims of Obamagate and deep state. Uh, but again, taking a step back, it's important to remember here that part of the Trump campaign strategy is, again, to shift some of the attention that is being thrown at the president amidst the coronavirus pandemic as we uh, you know, surpass 80,000 deaths here in the United States from this virus uh, to really try and shift some of that attention back on former Vice President Joe Biden, who has been at his home in Delaware. We've seen this month alone, the Trump campaign has invested over $10 million in negative ads, both online and on television, attacking the former vice president on everything from his past uh, policy standpoints on China uh, to his mental acuity. And so the Trump campaign uh, continuing to attack Joe Biden, trying to move him front and center in the conversation uh, as we get closer and closer to November. And, Bo, it isn't just President Trump that's talking about President Obama a lot. Uh, Biden has also been focusing uh, <laughs> on President Obama as he's trying to make his plea to voters to put him in office. It's in perfect ju juxtaposition, really, to President Trump. What's Biden's strategy in making so much of his campaign about Obama? Yeah, Obama was one popular word on the campaign trail ever since Joe Biden got in this race last April. He defended every move, basically, that Barack Obama made and tried to uh, get rid of any potential distance between him and the former president. That was at a time when Democrats were attacking uh, former President Barack Obama. And so now that we see this Obama gate, uh, what the campaign would call a conspiracy theory, come up, uh, obviously. Obviously, they do not agree with the uh, framing of this all, but they're not going to run away from uh, many of the decisions that the Obama administration did. And Nicole, let's turn to another topic. President Trump traveled Thursday to Pennsylvania. He has disagreed with uh, Democratic Governor Tom Wolf's plans for a phased reopening there. He's been tweeting his support for protesters who have threatened to defy the governor's orders. What is the president's strategy in pressuring battleground states to reopen areas that are still experiencing increasing infection rates? Well, it's a great question, Lana, and uh, the president visiting a PPE manufacturing plant today in Lehigh Valley, a bellwether in the battleground state of Pennsylvania. Of course, we know uh, that President Trump won Pennsylvania in 2016, uh, but by a margin of less than 1 percent, and so certainly looking to win that state back again. Now, he has accused Democratic governors, including Pennsylvania Governor uh, Wolf, of keeping states, their states closed to hurt his presidential election come November. Now, uh, Governor Wolf, we should say, in response to that, said that he was safely and slowly reopening the state, pointing to the nearly 60,000 people in the state of Pennsylvania who have had the virus. Uh, but, of course, the president uh, has been messaging on reopening the economy. He understands that, you know, millions of Americans are, in fact, out of work right now. Uh, according to a recent CBS News poll put out today, we should point out that 62 percent of Republicans say their primary concern right now is reopening the economy and getting back to work. Uh, that's in stark uh, contrast to the 12 percent of Democrats that say uh, reopening the 
the economy should be the main priority right now. Uh, but again, the president uh, reinforcing this message today in Pennsylvania and visiting the manufacturing plant. He has not had a rally in over 10 weeks, but there were sort of rally vibes today at this event. Uh, he entered uh, the stage uh, to the tune of Born in the USA instead of Hail to the Chief. Uh, he had a few applause lines for the audience there and, you know, consistently says that he looks forward to getting back on the campaign trail again. We know that his team is working remotely right now, but working very hard in the state of Pennsylvania as well. The Trump campaign does have over 60 people on the ground there at the moment. They have made over 1.6 million calls, phone banking to residents of the state of Pennsylvania uh, since they went remote on March 13th. Yes, that campaign is still very much active, even as uh, as the president is eager to get back out on the campaign trail. So one last question. I'm going to throw it over to you, Bo. The other big political question, Mark, right now, Biden's search for a running mate. What's the latest that you can tell us on that? Yeah, this is the political betting sphere of the race still that's going on. So Joe Biden still says that there is a dozen women that are being vetted by his campaign right now and that this vetting process will take five to eight weeks for a really deep dive into their backgrounds and their policy positions on a range of topics. But uh, a source that's familiar with the thinking of the kind of top echelon of the campaign, what's, what's really going on behind the scenes, uh, tells me that serious consideration is really just between around five to eight women politicians right now. And one question that I've been uh, discussing with a lot of Democrats in and around the campaign is if Joe Biden has a senatorial uh, bias when it comes to picking his running mate. On the campaign trail, Joe Biden constantly said that he was the one that President Barack Obama shipped up to Capitol Hill to really a strong arm on legislative pushes. And so if he wants someone like that, will he require his running mate to at least know how and when to navigate the halls of Congress? You have any names for us, Bo? Any projections? Uh, I'm not in the betting game right now, uh, but it seems like a lot of the names that we're hearing, Senator Kamala Harris, Senator Amy Klobuchar, Gretchen Whitmer, Senator Cortez Masto from Nevada, those seem like names that I keep hearing over and over again. Hearing those names a lot. Nicole Skanga, Bo Erickson, thank you both for joining us.